I've not seen a picture on it for a while. Last but certainly not least, we have... All right, boys, time for round two. Three days later and another foot of snow, here we are. Happy birthday! <laughs> What's up guys, Alec Mag 111 Welcome back to another snow adventure in good old Indiana. You guys have done an awesome job on last week's video. You guys are really running up the love. I asked for likes. Um, you guys did it. It is my birthday today. Yes, Papa Mac is turning 25 years old. Some of you guys have been around for a long time and you're like, dang, this dude is 25 already. Yeah, it's crazy. I've been doing this YouTube thing for Airsoft for like 10 years, which is insane. I uh, appreciate you guys. Seriously love the love that you guys have been given in the last few videos. Um, I got clowned last week because I didn't have gloves, so I ended up grabbing these out of my car. I did not think I was going to be able to open things and show you guys things well with gloves, so we're going to find out. It might be really awkward, and I might be like, look like I have some fat, thick hands right now, but it's time. It is three degrees outside. It says feels like three. I think it's 11, but feels like three. Um, so I got like 10 dislikes on last video, so I'm sorry for the 10 of you that live in Antarctica that I had offended. It's my bad. I didn't, I honestly didn't know, but uh, yeah. Let's get into the unboxing. All right, guys, it has been a minute since I have done a collection unboxing. I actually ordered this one right before I left for Christmas, I believe. So this has been chilling at my house in Indiana for like a month. Honestly, this is gonna be one of the best collection unboxings of the entire year. Uh, there's an Umbrella Armories gun in here. Oops. It is always a good time when you're pulling out Mickey Mouse wrapping paper. things I go through dealing with the Midwest. Yeah. Deal with that wind. I think we start out with a banger, guys. I don't know about you guys. Smash the comments. Guess what gun it's gonna be first. I'll give you a little bit of a, a little sneak peek. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, ooh, there we go. Up first is a VFC HK416. Man, this thing is absolutely beautiful. This thing looks really, really good. I think this is one of the newer like A5 styles. I've actually never felt one of the newer ones. It looks like it's just a little bit different body lines. Looks like it's got that newer, bigger bolt as well as mag release. I don't think those are aftermarket. I believe those are stock and he set this gun up really, really well. Up front, we have a Griffin Armament M4 SDK suppressor. I really like this. Definitely sweet whenever you see that PTS logo right there. Looks like it's a suppressor flash hider combo. Uh-oh. This is where I told you guys the gloves are going to come into problems. That's all right. We got it. Ooh, that muzzle brake is so cool. I love that. I think I've seen a few of these Griffin Armament suppressor slash flash hider combos before. And I really, really like how that looks. I'm not a huge fan of running suppressors on my airsoft guns because it just adds an extra length for it. Um, without, unless you foam fill it with a Polar Star, I don't think it's super necessary. This one does have the integrated front iron sights as well. So it's definitely got to be like the A5 version. I don't know if it says it anywhere, but I really, really like how this feels. He's also running a bunch of XTM panels on here. It looks like he's running the newer, these are like the enhanced XTM panels with the gray and black. I love that. And he's got a Magpul RVG on the bottom as well. It does look like they cut away that stupid, annoying thumb groove on this A5 as well, as well as making the angle a little bit steeper. So it's a little bit easier if you're shooting a smaller length barrel. I have one of those on my real one as well. It also looks like the trigger guard is a little bit wider, so you can kind of fit something in there. This is actually really good with gloves to kind of see that. You can see how it's rounded instead of flat like it used to be. And then this new stock looks really interesting as well. It's definitely a lot more streamlined. So this is pretty cool. I have not seen these. I have no idea how long ago they came out, but really, really solid first gun in the collection. All right, up next, we have some sort of Pelican case. This one says Soft Arms Dealer. I have an idea of what's in this bad boy. Ooh. Oh, please. Ooh. Dude, this thing is absolutely beautiful. So here we have a Limcat Custom Tokyo Marie 5.1 High Kappa. All right, boys, the gloves are off so I can actually feel the gun in all of its beauty. Up first, we have up top, we have a Limcat Custom Battle Cat Slide. I believe this has got to be like Edge or Airsoft Masterpiece. I'm not exactly sure the difference 100% of those. It is short stroked at some level. But man, let's just take a look at that for a second. That thing is so, so beautiful. I love the gold and black on pistols. They feel absolutely awesome. Does feel like it's got upgraded springs. 
Um, you can see right here, it's got the gold barrel through that. I believe this is the stock barrel, maybe? Definitely could not have taken the upper and lower off if I had gloves on, but the hands aren't feeling too cold right now. So we got a lot of upgrades internally. You can tell there's the Airsoft Masterpiece pop-up whole setup there. That thing is super, super nice. He's got a short stroke too, it looks like. I'm not exactly sure. This is a little bit weird with how this one kind of sticks out to the same length, if not a little bit more than the barrel. It does feel like the outer barrel is metal. I don't know if that's one of the aluminum ones or the stainless steel but this thing is super, super cool. I also really, really like the trigger on this. It's really interesting because usually with the triggers, you kind of have the bottom would be where this is, if that makes sense. So usually, I don't know if it's intentionally run upside down. I, don't, I think this is how it's supposed to be, but I've never really seen it where the top of the groove here is higher than the bottom, but I actually really like it. It makes a really cool flat facing trigger, and I think it looks cool. It's almost like one of those puzzle triggers, I think are what these are called. But beautiful, beautiful gun. And then finally, last but not least, is the Magwell. I really like this. The Magwell as well as the Mags, I think these are same brand. No, they look a little bit different color-wise, but they're actually matched color-wise really, really well. And this one has a really interesting white underneath. It's almost like some sort of like white wall on a tire in a sense, but it's really interesting. I have never seen that with a Magwell before but I absolutely love this gun. Up next, we have another rifle of some sort. This is just a basic M4A1 Colt. I'm not exactly sure 100% what brand this is. Looks to be something like Saima, just a basic baseline Colt. How many times can I say basic in the same sentence? I believe it is polymer body. Is that polymer? Yeah. <laughs> this is a polymer body M4. I actually really like this. It's pretty the solid setup. It's pretty cool. It has like the 5.56 NATO 1.7 twist on the barrel, which is pretty accurate to spec. Um, has the cool plastic Colt trades there. Obviously, this is not like a super nice gun, but this would be a great starter gun for somebody. I love these guns. I think getting in and getting plastic starter guns is awesome because for kids that are younger, if you're carrying around a big, expensive, heavy metal gun all day, it is a little bit annoying and just starts taxing on players early. Up next, we have baseline gun number two. It does look like the flash hider broke off and is in the magwell. I don't know if that was during shipping or what. It's just a cheap metal or plastic flash hider anyway. But this is a basic G&G M4 combat machine. These are awesome little starter guns, kind of similar to that last one. Looks like this is just the baseline. Does have the stock piece on. Um, cannot tell anything different. Looks like it might have had an upgraded hop-up. I don't think that's the stock hop-up. That looks like a different one because it's a rotary style unless they switch to a red, which I do not believe that G&G has. It reminds me of one of those Lancer Tactical ones, which I don't know if that's better or worse but solid little starter gun number two. Man, we're just continuing with the heat on this unboxing. Alrighty, in here we have some sort of gun bag. This is where the gloves are gonna be. Oh, uh-oh, does, does that look very familiar for some of you? I get hated on all the time. Alec Mack, why don't you ever do anything that's not M4s? Uh, most people have M4s and when I buy them, they just sell me M4s, but this, I believe, is an LCT AK. So I don't think, I think the top is in there somewhere but this is an LCT AK from what I can tell externally based on the build quality, it feels absolutely awesome. Wow, that is beautiful. I can't tell any trades or anything, but it definitely is steel. You can tell just on how it looks, this is a full steel. It is an ENL. Okay, so ENL, I think ENL actually broke off from LCT a while ago or something. Every single person that has been hating on Alec Mack for not having guns that are not M4s or anything special, here you go, this is for you. This is an AK from ENL. I've actually never owned an ENL AK before. I have had a few LCT ones, but you can tell this thing is absolutely insane quality. You can tell that's real wood. You can tell this is full steel construction. All right, so let's start out with the front. I love how it looks in the front. Absolutely love these things. Um, this thing is super, super solid and rugged, like I've already said. The wood feels really, really awesome. Even through the gloves, you can kind of tell how rigid that is. Everything is super locked in. It's not gonna rattle. Man, this is a beautiful, beautiful gun. I actually really like the skeletal style stocks on these AKs as well. I think they are awesome because they cut down the weight. Um, it does make them a little bit more front heavy because you don't have as much weight back here. But obviously, if you're holding the gun, you're not going to have any problems. Or if you're younger, I know some of those kids. I started out playing Airsoft with a Saima M14. It weighed like 16 pounds, and I was like 12. I was lugging that bad boy all over the Airsoft fields. It was an M14 SOCOM that I got for like $150. And that thing was awesome, but it was probably as tall as I was. Beautiful, beautiful AK. Ooh, we're going to save this bad boy for last real quick. Last pistol in the unboxing. Looks like we have an Elite Force 1911 TAC. Ooh, I love, for those of you guys that don't know, I love these guns. I actually, one of the first Airsoft CO2 blowback pistols that I had 
was a KWC 1911, which is basically the old version of these. They're all, these are technically KWC, but they're OEM by Elite Force. These things have awesome, awesome recoil. They are super, super nice. They last pretty long. Honestly, they have pretty good longevity on their guns and they are very affordable for a new airsoft pistol. I love these little golf ball style grooves on here. Obviously I can't feel them super well, but I can feel them a little bit through gloves. This black version is not my favorite. I like the tan and the gray. I love the different ones that you can get. Also, if you have one of these, I highly recommend getting the Magpul 1911 grips. I think they're only like 25 bucks shipped and they feel even higher quality than these stock ones and they just make your pistol kind of unique. You kind of get your own style of it. They also come with a nice thread adapter as well as a bottom rail for these stock. So great pistol. All right, before we get into this bad boy over here, we're gonna go through an Alec Mac 101 the lightning round. We got the Hakatsu Thunderbee shells. Looks like we got one core in here and a few shells. Actually, I've never seen these ones before. These are like the tan with a little bit of white underneath them. I've not seen those, but they're kind of cool. He does, did include two extra TM high cap mags as well. These ones also have, they're the chrome ones and they have the gaskets from Nine Ball, which are really, really nice additions. And I believe one of them, yeah, one of them is a 4.3 and the other one is a 5.1. You can tell by the base plates. I'll show you. Yeah, as you can tell, you can see this one is a 4.3 base plate and is a little bit shorter. And you can tell this one is the 5.1 base plate and you can tell that those are a little bit different size wise. Up next, we got a Tunnel Mag. So, some of you noticed, man, these EPMs are crazy. I have two of the regular EPMs right here, and then I believe these are the EPM high caps for the EPM ones. I have not seen the EPM ones since they came out. I don't know, some of you guys can tell me in the comments below, but I think these are the these are still the mid caps, so they hold like 270 rounds, which doesn't really make them mid caps, if I think, but I'm also not super knowledgeable. But I don't know if these are the EPM ones or if they're just the high. Oh, it is safe. It says EPM ones right on the side of them. Stupid. Oops. So, first interaction with the EPM ones, they look very similar. I actually really like the feel of both of them. Obviously, these are like the two nicest, highest quality mags in the market. They are definitely insanely expensive. This one doesn't have as rubberized of a base plate as this one. I actually really like the rubberized base plates on the older ones, but these apparently hold 270 rounds, which is insane. Also got some other basic mags as well, KWA, VFC. It looks like we're also running a basic P mag, and then these are just one of the P mags that are used for the KWAs with like that feed all the way up into the gun. Oh, baby. Up next, we have, in this bad boy case, we have... I'll let you guys get a little sneak peek before I get a sneak peek. I know what it is, but I have only... I've not seen a picture on it for a while. Whoop. Last but certainly not least, we have an Umbrella Armory's Crytac Warsport LVOA. I'm speechless. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? This thing is absolutely beautiful. This is actually the third Umbrella gun that I have owned. I have not bought any of them from Umbrella themselves. I would love to work out a sponsorship. I don't know, Umbrella, if you're watching this video, reach out to your boy. They make absolutely insane guns. I ended up running one last time I played in July, and it was like the most smooth shooting gun. Had crazy semi-auto, had crazy full auto, had insane range with whatever they're doing on their guns. This one, I believe, is an older one because it has the Pro, and I believe they have switched to the Max hop-ups now because that was what is in my newer one. But they do crazy things with their arch hops. So let's start out with the front. Obviously, these War Sports have super, super cool flash hiders. You can tell there with the War Sport logo. Does look like he's running a front iron, which is kind of annoying, honestly. I don't know why he would be running. It's not interfering at all with the scope, so it doesn't really matter at all but I don't know why you'd have one on there if you don't have any rear iron. Up next for the grip setup that he is rocking. These are super, super nice. These are the Magpul rail covers. I'm not exactly sure which brand these are specifically. Um, he is running a PTS-1 AFG on here as well. These AFG ones are super, super nice. Um, it's the gray of the Crytek, which actually, this was the first Crytek that I ever owned was a War Sport in gray. And my buddy James is actually rocking it still. It is a beautiful, beautiful gun. The Crytek's are just such good bases to build everything on. They have the really cool charging handle as well. Whoa, this one actually has trades on it. It's a Radian? What? So this has got trades on it. It's an Airsoft Radian Raptor charging handle. This one, I don't know if they actually have the licensing for Radian. I love these charging handles. That's really, really cool. 
And for that beautiful red that you're seeing right there, that is the Retro Arms Trigger. I absolutely love these. It isn't as short of a trigger pull as the last one I had, but it's still obviously very, very short. And if you've got insane internals inside the gun, you don't need to have as quick of a trigger pull because it's gonna do all the work for you as long as you're not slow and you're really just spamming on that thing. The semi-auto that I was able to use on the other one was insane. I mean, every single time you hit it, it felt like a Polar Star engine, which is insane and very, very hard for inter really nice AEGs to be able to get quite to the level of Polar Stars, and it's still not gonna be as instantaneous because with an AEG engine, you're still gonna have to move more parts than a Polar Star but these things are super, super fast on semi, and that's one of my favorite things in Airsoft, to be honest. Up top with this bad boy here, we have some sort of G&G &G armament scope. I'm not 100% sure which one it is. He's got a Butler Creek little uh, cover on here as well. I've not seen this. Looks like it is illuminated blue as well as green. I don't see any red illuminations on there, but that is beautiful. I really like that. It looks really cool. It's just the dot that is illuminated on it. It's nice and clear. I don't know enough about G&Gs to say, hey, their optics are good or their optics are not, but I really like the look of that on this gun. I think it fits the gun out super, super well. All right, guys, this concludes the video. This has been Alec Mac 111 Thank you for joining me for my birthday unboxing. I honestly cannot think of a collection or anything that's better to unbox on my birthday. Really, really sweet stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. And as the sun is fading, this has been Alec Mac 111 Hopefully it didn't get too dark. I'll see you guys soon. I love you all.